What's up everyone, today we're taking a look at one of the best looking phones I've seen that goes for under $100. This is the P30 by Xgaudi, and it goes for around 90 bucks. Like I said, the main thing this device is going for is appearance. And well, it does that in both legitimate and in some pretty funny ways. Starting off with the front, you see that big 6 inch screen, which is 960 by 480 pixels, so it's not HD and looks okay. For the price, I guess it's fine, but everything has jagged edges and is obviously not going to be the best quality. Also, this screen is an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's actually got a taller display than your average phone, which I'm really liking. It makes it a little easier to reach more stuff on the screen, and I think it looks nicer. The viewing angles are decent, and the outside visibility is okay. If you look at the upper area of the screen, you see this kind of pseudo notch design. Lots of popular phones have notches right now, like this, so this phone is clearly trying to fit that 2019 look. That little notch thing actually houses the earpiece, and to the right of that is your front facing camera which is 5 megapixels and is just terrible. It seems to be pretty much the exact same camera that's on the back, but a tiny bit worse. I'll talk more about it when we get to the back of the phone. Also I really like how there's not that much bezel everywhere, and this is pretty cool to see since a lot of the time budget phones just have some super ugly large bezels. The P30 is running Android 9.0 which is Android Pie, the current newest version of the software, which is honestly nice to see, since the majority of budget phones from less popular companies usually come with a much older version. Inside this is 16 gigs of storage, 2 gigs of RAM, an MTK 6580A CPU, and a Mali 400MP GPU. Basically, all this comes together to make an experience that is okay. Going through the home screen and opening apps and stuff, it's all smooth for the most part, but inside of most apps and everything else, the experience is stuttery and not that great. And while the frame rate might not be the best, you will be able to run most games. There are some times though when the phone would just break down though, like whenever I tried to search for anything on Google for some reason. Remembering the price, the performance seems pretty standard. Also, I don't understand what that thing is that hides the navigation buttons, because as soon as you just touch anything, it pretty much just pops right back up. On the back of the phone, we get to see more of that wannabe modern flagship look. You see three cameras, and it looks cool, but only one of them is real. The one on the top is once again 5 megapixels. Inside the camera app, you also get a few modes like video, photo, face beauty, blur, and mono. All in all, the camera quality is pretty meh, which is really no surprise since this is one of the corners that almost every single budget phone decides to cut. The photos are extremely soft and lack detail, and they really fall apart even more in low light and look washed out a lot of the time. Videos are no better suffering from a lot of the same problems and constantly dropping frames. Continuing on, you see what looks like a fingerprint scanner on the upper back, but if you go ahead and try to use it, nothing will happen because it's just a circle. In the bottom left, you have some branding, which looks nice at first, but this thin aluminum foil-like stuff peels off way too easily. So while that might not be too nice, the back of this phone is actually a different story. It's made from a decent plastic in both feels and looks pretty good. Looking at the bottom, you have your microphone and speaker grill. The audio quality isn't great. It's definitely more than functional, but it's pretty grainy and is super easy to cover up since it's just coming out of that one spot. Then on the right, you'll find your volume rocker and power button. Everything is really clicky and feels good to press. There's nothing on the left side. And then on the top, there's a micro USB port for charging and headphone jack. So thankfully they didn't try to copy all the newer phones in this aspect. You can also pop the back off and that's going to reveal the dual SIM card slots and one of these doubles as an SD card slot so you can expand your storage with a micro SD card up to 32 gigs in size. Also revealed is the 2800 milliamp hour battery which usually lasts around a full day of use. The phone feels pretty solid in the hand and not that cheap at all. The screen size doesn't feel too big Although obviously you are going to have to do some sliding of the hand, or use two hands altogether to reach everywhere. And this thing has some decent weight to it too. Overall, it's pretty apparent that this phone is trying its absolute hardest to look modern and blend in with the current batch of popular phones. It does this in some good and not so good ways. The taller aspect ratio, newest version of Android, smaller bezels, the wannabe notch, the fake triple cameras, and the fake fingerprint scanner. Not a fan of them trying to trick people into thinking the phone has more than it really does. For about 90 bucks, you're getting a good looking device with a decent screen, two garbage cameras, standard battery life, a not so great speaker, and the newest version of Android. I can't directly recommend this, 
for any type of person over another device that's already out, but it's cool to see how these cheaper phones are just getting better and better. Thanks for watching, the link to the P30 is in the description below. As well, don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming videos, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.